Hello, Cem Tezcan here. About two years ago, I created this CRT TV VCR effects for Unreal Engine, and I am constantly adding some updates to make it better uh, day by day. So, with this final update, I also created a demo uh, scene within Unreal Engine to show you uh, the parameters easily without purchasing the asset pack so it will be easier for you to see the capabilities of this um, material by yourself with this demo I'm launching it and in this video I will be showing you the parameters so it's op it opens up with a footage that have been taken from uh, an old, uh, old school arcade game uh, which is called Art of Fighting so we are seeing a video footage on the screen and also you see that there are three arcade cabinets to show this um, image on the screen so I pressed P key to pause the footage and it will it enables us to uh, just run the uh, video footage and pause it so first of all let me show you the footage itself I'm turning off the filter and you will you see that this is the clean image that has been playing on the screen and enabling the filter back you see the result that my um, material generates by using this video footage as an input so let's check the keyboard hotkeys we have three of them you see that P just pauses and resumes the video playback Z makes it a zoomed um, state of this camera and if I press the U key it just uh, hides the UI for us to see the results better so I'm pressing back the U key to make uh, to make the parameters visible and I will be showing you these parameters and their effect on the material so let's zoom in to the standard foot, uh, footage and you see that we have a very sharp pixels and we have the color transitions uh, very visible because of the um, color count limit or uh, palette limit of the of these 16 bit games and you see that once we enable the CRT filter we get a smoothed result on the transitions of the color and also we get a nice um, smoothing on the general image let's start by the image blur parameter which is at 0.5 we can set it to 0 and you see that it sharpens a little bit and if we increase it you see that uh, the general image is smoothed out CRT TVs has a has an effect on blurring the image a little bit so I added this parameter to control the image better this way so we have a specular material that makes the reflections sharper on the image let me show you you see that there is a reflection of a single point light actually uh, I couldn't be able to get into detail of the scene yet but I will uh, make it more advanced in time by time so you see that for the specular we just have a simple light reflecting from the screen yet and next we have a chromatic distance which makes the image separated by um, two colors to the left and to the right which makes a nice glass reflection result of this CRT TVs and also makes it more nostalgic feel on the image itself you can exaggerate uh, this value 
out of boundary by putting uh, uh, custom numbers there. Let me enter a number like that. So you see the effect is more intense by that way. Emissive intensity makes the image more brighter uh, by multiplying the color result of the emissive channel. And we have roughness to control the reflections roughness value on the glass. Uh, you can also add custom roughness values uh, or textures to your, to your screen to make uh, more variated results on the glass surface. And we have a saturation value to exaggerate the colors. You see that from black and white to a more intense colors. You can adjust the saturation value. And now we have this vertical trace parameters. Vertical trace is the general trace effect of the CRT screens because uh, the image is uh, generated by the uh, ray gun. So these rays are uh, created from top to bottom. And if your shutter speed is different on your camera while you are recording a video of the CRT TVs in real world, you get some uh, traced black areas on your screen. L uh, let me show you what I mean. I will increase this vertical trace intensity. I uh, uh, multiplied this trace with 10 and it makes a just flashing screen effect, which is also good. But what I'm mentioning is more like an effect Let me drop the value, put this, an effect like this. You see that we are having a trace from top to bottom. So this is a fake effect of the shutter speed difference with the refresh rate of the screen and your recording camera. Let me drop this saturation a little bit. And by this vertical trace parameters, we can increase the trace number. We can increase the and decrease the ray speed. And also we can adjust the intensity by changing numbers like this. If you increase the speed too much and set the repeat as one, even point 0.1, you see that a flashing screen with a nice result like this. And this speed just controls the flashing frequency on our side. So let's move on with the other parameters and we can just decrease the intensity to smoothen down this flashing effect because it's not good for our eyes anyway. So now we have a vignette amount which is which creates a darker side areas on the boundary of this screens. Let me show you by exaggerating the effect and you see that we have a very dark corners and sides and center is more um, lit by the screen. So this effect also helps on nice results on the screens. And we have now the halation and glow parameters. Glow amount just controls the general glow on the screen and you see that we have we are having an overlaying blurred image on top of the um, original image. So this controls the blurness of the overlaid glow and this one controls the intensity of this glow effect. 
and halation is similar to this glove but you see that the halo effect is just a refraction of the image itself on the glass of the screen so let me show you by increasing the parameter a little bit all right and you see that we have the original image separated from itself and used as an overlaying image but we have a fade level to adjust the bottom threshold of the halation image so after increasing a little bit you see that only separated values are the brighter ones and the level of the brighten uh, image is just adjusted by this halo fade so i'm increasing the halo fade to get rid of the bottom values and just having the bright values and i'm decreasing the halo shift to adjust a little bit of separation from the original image and i'm decreasing the general halo opacity to get this effect this effect by the way let me remove the specular to get a clean image on the glass this hal uh, halation just creates a nice um, copy of the bright areas on the image because of the inner refraction of the CRT TV itself so this makes a nice touch on this kind of image. Let me resume the playback and show you a better result on this image. So I'm increasing the halo level. This is also the halo MIP level which controls the blurriness of the um, halation image. And just this kind of opacity and a little bit of shiftness is good for this kind of effect you see that it's a fake effect that creates the own refraction of the brighter areas inside the glass itself so let's move on with the rest of the parameters we have a monochrome screen toggle once i select it it just makes the image uh, in black and white and by this secondary toggle you see that we can convert the black and white image to uh, green screens which is popular on the crt screen industry uh, when it's time of beginning and also we can adjust the contrast of this monochrome result which is good for old school um, old cinema movies like this and you can just generate this kind of uh, footage from let's say from 50s or 60s so let's turn off the monochrome screen and our next stop is the phosphor settings these are the general pattern that we are seeing on this close-up CRT material you see that the images are colors are generated by these patterns and this is the these are the shadow masks uh, on the screen which are controlled by the phosphor settings first of all we have an HQ shadow slot mask that makes the quality adjust the quality of the pattern but you see that if I zoom out from the screen because of the high quality of this pattern the general smoothing and mip mapping prevents the nice results and colors to be seen so get rid of this uh, wrong result I added this parameter so we got a low quality shadow mask to get rid of this problematic phosphors on the distance but if you are using a close-up render on your CRT screen uh, this parameter helps because it generates 
the better and realistic phosphor result, shadow mask or result, uh, like this way. So we have this phosphor visibility parameter that controls the intensity of this phosphors, which is the original result is more like that. But if we uh, zoom out from the screen, we got a very disturbed image by this high quality result. And by disabling the HQ result and decreasing a visibility a little bit, we got a better phosphor result like this. So low quality is even good on the close-up um, camera shots. So we have a phosphor scale. You see that uh, this is the main result of the pattern. And you see that this is the low quality uh, phosphor shadow mask. And if I enable the HQ version, you see that we have a more sharper pattern on our site. And also this parameter controls the um, horizontal scale of this texture. And this is the general scale of this parameter. Let's zoom out and see the result. And also we have another parameter about changing the mask type because uh, there's a typo here. It's a slot mask or shadow mask. Let me show you by changing it. But let me switch to the um, HQ version and let's increase the scale. You see that this is the more uh, popular pattern that used on CRT PC monitors and this one is used on the TVs. So we have two types of shadow masks. Uh, you can use them according to your asset that you are using your uh, using as showing your images. So if it's a PC monitor you use this dot pattern and if you are using a TV, this is more like that have been used on the TVs. Let's increase the pattern back. And I'm changing, removing, getting back to the low quality shadow mask because it generates better image from distance. So next is a pixelation toggle. If I enable it, it creates another pixelated image of the current footage. You see that we have a pixelation scale which is 160. That means it generates the texture in this resolution on vertically. So we have vertically have 160 pixels. So you can adjust your scan line count to match this texture to get a pixel perfect result of your pixelated image. Let me show you by changing the scanline count by here. If I enter 80 here, you will see that each pixels will get an exact scanline by this way. If I set this pixelation scale to 240, by adding the half of this value as scanline count, you see that we will be having a pixel perfect match for our scan lines. And it depends on you to generate the pixelation level and the scanline intensity according to the image. If we add the same value with the pixelation scale, we will get a double scan result which is also popular on MS-DOS gaming in 90, 90s. 
So this is a way to control your footage to be used as pixel perfect way if it's an HQ video and also if it's not pixelated. So I'm turning this off and switch back to the previous scan 9 level. And by this way, we have been able to enter to the scan line effects that way. Online clarity is a is an old effect on 8-bit computers with the progressive scan. It generates a saturated result with each odd scans scan lines to create this feeling on the image. Uh, it may not be re relevant for the more modern um, TVs, so it, it's better to turn off this way. So scan line count controls the scan line number. Uh, I advise you to use the scan line count according to the resolution of your image. So I also suggest to use pixel perfect footage for to match the scan lines with the pixels better this way and this controls the gap between the scan lines let me show the result by zooming in and you see that this controls the gap between the scan lines and this intensity also controls the scan line darkness on the image. So let's turn the values back and we have this result back. And also we have a scan line shift speed. Once it's zero it's a static scan lines but if you increase this value they will be moving from top to bottom like this. So this makes also a nice Moyer effect on the general image. So we have another parameters of the screen scale. Since uh, you will be using different textures and different aspect ratios on your screens, I added these parameters to control the scale, vertical and horizontal scale of the of your image um, which makes it easier to control the size and aspect ratio of your image and signal distortion is a nice um, effect on getting disturbance on the signal cable so let me increase the intensity first and you will see that mostly the red areas will be affected by this um, parameter and you will see that we have an interference speed that controls the problematic waviness the speed of the problematic waviness and if I decrease it and set it to zero they, there will be only just this um, displacement on the red areas. Let me play back the video and move to more colorful part of this video. Let's see. You will see that the red areas will be more affected by this signal distortion effect. So we have a white noise intensity which controls the general white noise on the screen which is also another um, reception problem on the antennas of on this CRT TVs and this controls the scale of the white noise can adjust it any way you like. 
So we have another parameters like this, a random horizontal offset. Let me increase the strength of this effect first. You see that we have parasited um, result. And this is the frequency of this offsetted pixels on the image. If you set it to zero, there will be offsetted by just the actual image. And if I increase the frequency, you will see that the frequency is increased on the um, displaced textures or pixels. See that it's more like this, and I can decrease the strength of this effect a little bit to make it a tiny waviness on the image, like this. A tiny waveness on the pixels creates a unique problematic image as well. Another section of this footage. Alright. So next parameters are the screen hop intensity and frequency. Let me increase the intensity first and you will see that we have a hopping screen randomly triggered by this parameter. And if we decrease the intensity of this hopping, you will see that we will be having more smooth hopping on the screen image by this way. If we increase the value much, there will be more impact on this hopping. And this frequency controls the uh, triggered hopping frequency or count. If I increase it, there will be so much hopping in a uh, more than in each second by this way. And which is another problematic signal reception on this kind of TVs. So these two parts are related with the VCR effects. We are not using, uh, we are not watching a VCR footage, but let me show you anyway. If you are using a video footage on your screens, you can use these parameters to adjust your image as it's as it's been playing on a VCR device or Betamax or VHS, which is which doesn't matter. So this is the timestamp opacity which generates a footage timestamp of the recorded video. So you can adjust the timestamp uh, ratio. You can adjust the scale. The anchor point of the scaling is not centered, but you can move the timestamp by these parameters anyway and check your image while moving its position. These numbers are also can be entered within the material itself. So next is the color to tornado, which is a popular effect on this uh, VCR cassettes. So we have another one, which is tracking noise. Let me increase the tracking noise level and you will see that from top to bottom, we will be having some uh, tracking noises on the footage and we can also adjust the density of this noise like this and decrease it back and you will see that the noises are just more 
more intense on the bottom half of the screen. This is caused by the header adjustment of the uh, VCR players. They can be uh, removed by adjusting the tracking adjust wheel on these devices. So you can add them like this. So this one adjusts the scale of the noise. And also one final parameter is the warp belt intensity. Let me increase it and you will be seeing some belts from left to right that creates a warp on the image like you see a second ago. Let me turn off the screen hop and we will be seeing it better because it generates about 10, uh, 1 per 10 seconds. Let's see. You see that it is created randomly in any part of the screen and this controls the intensity of this warp belt. Let's see if we can encounter with another one. Not seeing yet. We have some tiny versions. Let me increase it. The intense its intensity. There are happening in the bottom part of the screen and rarely it generates on it is generated on the center of the screen. Like this. And this is also another effect of this uh, VCR players. So let's increase the screen hop back. And we have now a very problematic image on our screen. And by turning off this filter, you will see that the clean footage. Let's move the image footage a little bit forward. And by stopping there or just playing it back, you will see that this is the filtered version. Now, this is one. I I hope you like this demo. Also, all of these materials, all of these parameters are also be usable on post as post process effect that can be used on cameras. So you can, uh, you don't need a footage to use these parameters. Uh, you can uh, directly apply all these effects to your actual game by using this material as a post-process material which is just um, affects the viewport as it's doing uh, on this CRT surface and CRT material and by that way you will be using all these parameters while you're looking anywhere on your 3D game uh, by using it as a post-process. So thanks for watching and I hope you like the overall parameters uh, and have a good day. Goodbye.